Hello Jags, Fahad here. MRN, symbol A-M-R-N. That's the biotech that will be reporting earnings on May 1st before market opens. Now there's a lot of expectations being set around this company, what it will report, particularly related to their drug called Vasepa. And what I wanted to do in this video is basically take a look at what is known and what is unknown. I think some further clarity or some big high level views are warranted over here just to kind of show you what I'm looking at on my end. So here's what we know about MRN, about particularly this drug, Vasepa. Last time when the company reported earnings in February, that was the fourth quarter 2018 that, that they reported. Take a look at this snapshot. And this one shows how strong Vasepa net revenues were for the fourth quarter. A remarkable quarter, $77 million in revenues, blue expectations out of water, sequential improvement from $55 million versus the prior quarter. Incredible. All that sounds great, right? Perfect. Now let's take a look at the channel checks for the first quarter that will be reported on May 1st. This is the script data, the TRX performance of Vasepa that comes out from various sources. All analysts out there on the street basically take a look at this particular snapshot to come up with reasonable estimates for the street. And what this is showing is that this is a comparison of 2019 versus the prior two years. Notice how strong the TRX for 2019 is running for Vasepa and it's continuously accelerating basically every single month, reaching record highs on week 12th of the last data that we have, which was towards the end of March. All of that is showing that you're going to see a really strong quarter and very strong sales for Vasepa for Q1 when MRN reports earnings on May 1st. Based on these channel checks, here's a comment that comes from Jeffries today. And this is the file that was published this morning, as you can see, dated April 24th. And this is what the, uh, the analyst said. The IMS scripts have reached all-time high over the past 9 of 10 weeks, tracking to perhaps 75 to $80 million in revenues and possibly well above consensus estimates of $67 million. That's great, right? Because we have these channel checks telling us that the quarter beat could be as much as 20% above the consensus. That's pretty good too. And now let's take a look at what is the unknown part. So far, every data point, all these channel checks that I have highlighted were reflection of what kind of quarter we should expect from the company for uh, for the first quarter, which will be reported on May 1st. Now, this is the unknown part. On March 18th, the company reported its Reduce It study, R-E-D-U-C-E, -E, It study. I'm going to show this one snapshot and going to read this real quick because it shows the significance of how important this study was. Various studies have found a recurrence rate of close to 50% for any cardiovascular event or for subsequent coronary revascularization in the year after a heart attack. And up to 75% of patients have a recurrent event within three years. Two VESPA reduced total events, first and subsequent events, by 30% compared to placebo, reflecting that for every 1,000 patients treated for five years, the icosepent ethyl versus placebo approximately 159 could be prevented with Vasepa, including prevention of approximately 12 of cardiovascular deaths, 42 heart attacks, 14 strokes, 76 coronary revascularizations, and 16 episodes of hospitalization for unstable angina. These are very, very strong clinical data points that came out from the Reduce It study. This came out on March 18th. So when this data came out, we the script data that we were looking at earlier wasn't capturing any upside that would potentially be guaranteed by this kind of strong data if it were to basically get label expansion. Management used that March 18th strong study to immediately start to get uh, uh, start to basically file new application for accelerated and priority review both in Canada as well as in the United States. On March 27th, 
the American Diabetes Association added Vasepa to its standard of care. Major news at the end of the first quarter. That is one of the three unknowns. Logically, if ADA, ADA is endorsing this, you should see more, further accelerated adoption going forward from here in the second quarter and so on. And as a result, the full year guidance should also be raised by the company. That was on March 27th. March 28th, the next day, Ameren submitted SNDA, also called the Supplemental New Drug Application with the FDA based on this data and is now seeking expanded indication uh, capsules based on the landmark study. If the company gets the uh, expanded label, naturally that also means that its Vasepa drugs will be able to sell for many other indications and the priority review for this usually takes up to 60 to 74 days by the FDA. So this should also complete some time in the second quarter and as a result if it does happen, which it should, you should see further growth acceleration particularly in the second half of 2019. Makes sense, right? This was on March 28th. Then the next day, on March 29th, once again based on this data, Ameren announced that it will be, it is granted a priority review from Health Canada, which is equivalent to the FDA part of Canada. That Canada is not currently selling Vasepa because it is not approved yet. But based on this, it should also get approval with the United States already in the banks. And as a result, this should also launch pretty soon. The NDA in Canada or what they call NDS in Canada was filed in April 2019 and the approval should be coming pretty soon too. So here's what I'm trying to get at. The channel checks are pointing to a very strong quarter for Q1, but the key for the company is going to be the guidance, second quarter guidance, as well as the full year 2019 guidance. Three events have taken place, all right at the very end of the first quarter. First, there was March 18, there was this reduce it clinical data came out, which was pretty strong. And then immediately on March 27th, we saw the, the American Diabetes Association basically added Vasepa to standard care. The next day on March 28th, the, uh, the company filed the SNDA with the FDA to get label expansion. And that's currently going to be settled in the next 74 days or so. And number three, on March 29th, Health Canada took, gave the priority review and that sh approval should be coming up pretty soon too. As those three catalysts materialize going forward from here, we should see even better sales and higher growth for the second quarter as well as for the full year 2019. All these different things basically point to a very robust outlook for the company. But here's the part that is challenging. Here's the part that is confusing. Take a look at this next chart. This is the short interest and this is the one that I find the most puzzling over here. Short interest has been dramatically rising in this company. Now as of the end of uh, as a middle of middle of December last year short float was about 9.9 .9 million shares and it has since doubled now at 21 million shares. The short interest was about 7-8% at the end of 2018 and now it's nearly doubled at around 14%. And it, there was a dramatic increase, increase in the short interest right at the end of March, just as the comp all these script data channel checks were coming out, as well as the company went through series of actions with the FDA in Canada, as well as uh, American Diabetes Association, adding it to standard care. Doesn't make sense, does it? It does not make sense. Why is the short interest rising? Why has the short interest gone to a two-year high at the end of the first quarter with such a strong channel checks as well as all these other catalysts that are still playing out? That is yet to be uh, yet to be determined. That is yet to figure out exactly why the short interest is rising. Perhaps there are bears and bulls argument around M&A prospects because this company is also trading on logic that it will eventually get acquired and maybe no buyer will step in at, at any given time. Maybe a competitor will have a better product out there that will knock Vasepa off the charts. I do not know yet. I do not have answer for you why the short interest is rising. I just wanted to present a fundamental bull case that seems to be quite strong, pretty strong going forward from here. Last thing, the chart. If you look at this particular chart, this is 
setting up is with a wedge now. It's been consolidating around this uh, high teens for quite some time. And now we have a wedge formation. Either a breakdown or a breakout is coming. And the and most likely catalyst will be this earnings report that is coming out on May 1st. Now, if you look at this, each time the stock has spiked, I've especially, especially marked in circles, the volume has been significantly strong. The spikes in stocks have been led by sharp rise in volume, but the subsequent pullback and consolidations have happened on lighter and lighter volume. This is a potential wedge formation that's going to eventually get resolved either upside to the downside, but the technicals would also suggest basically looking at the volume profile that a breakout should be in our hands, but perhaps after the earnings comes out, or if not after earnings, then when some of these catalysts that I just highlighted play out, including approval in Canada, including the uh, the expanded label from the FDA, which should happen in the second quarter, or maybe just better sales expectation after the American Diabetes Association added it to the standard care. Any of those things could materialize. So that's it from me. Wanted to point out what I'm seeing in front of me. And then the key, the tricky part over here is rising short interest. We'll find out what happens on May 1st. That's it from me. See you next time.